December 24th, 2015, a day before Christmas, Anthony Tolson, a professional bass player, was shot and killed in Detroit, Michigan. The two suspects come running around. They divide, and one goes around the front and eventually shoots at Mr. Tolson, who's still in the driver's seat. So what exactly did Mr. Tolson do for these two men to decide to kill him on that fateful Christmas Eve? <laughs> the short answer to that question is nothing. And the long answer to that question is um, um, nothing again. He really didn't do anything except. In front of the store, according to the witness, Mr. Sears and Mr. Tolson went into the store with his close friend before heading home to celebrate Christmas with his children. Mr. Sears went into the store to make a purchase. While he was in the store, someone ran into the store saying that two men had just shot someone in the parking lot and had driven off with the vehicle. Mr. Sears subsequently went outside of the store where he was horrified to see his friend laying on the ground and the vehicle they had arrived in was gone. This act was recorded on at least three video cameras in the areas and submitted as people exhibit number two. Those videos revealed that two individuals approached Mr. Tolson's vehicle and was out in the yard his life shot him three times according to the medical examiner's report and then drove off with his car. Mr. Young's aunt here strictly testified that he confessed to her that he was the one that had committed the, this absolutely horrible, unprovoked, senseless shooting of Mr. Tolson in cold blood in the chest after his bro decided that they could get money for Mr. Tolson's rims so they decided to rob him. He ordered him to get out of the car and when he said no, they decided that their desire to get something from nothing was greater than or more important than human life itself. Mr. Young callously and without regard for life shot Mr. Tolson in the chest. Mr. Cox ruthlessly and with total and complete disregard for human life approached Mr. Tolson's car immediately shooting through the front windshield and according to the medical examiner's report. <laughs> If you somehow still don't know what's going on, the real reason why they killed Mr. Tolson was because Mr. Tolson had nice rims on his car. Just the rims, not even the car. It's not because he had a nice car, he just had nice rims. So they just thought, okay, we could sell these rims and get so much money. So before, they came up to Mr. Tolson and they were like, okay, bro, can you get out of the car so we just steal it? Put in mind. At this point, Mr. Tolson has gone into the store, bought some nice gifts that he's about to go home and give to his children and his family because, you know, it's Christmas. It's about to be Christmas, so he's feeling all happy. So you know he wasn't going to get out of the car just for these people to steal his rims. He was going to fight, and he fought. And left to fester in their minds and in their hearts. Just as the court noted in the Taylor case, which was presented to this court during arguments on the admissibility of a co-defendant's statement against another defendant. These defendants had an unabashed willingness to kill Mr. Tolson for some rims, weed, and video games. How awfully outrageous is that? Clearly, the testimony in this case on this record is sufficient to create a question of fact. For a trial of fact, there is probable cause to believe that the crimes as charged and the information were committed. They were committed in the city of Detroit and they were committed by Mr. Charles James Cox and Mr. Darnell Jean Arthur Young. Therefore, they are both bound over to the Wayne County Circuit Court for further proceedings on the information, arraignment on the information. 
Anthony Tolson was pretty known around Detroit. He even worked with Neo at some point in his career. So when he was shot and killed on that fateful night, so many people around his area came together to find the people responsible for his death. Tolson was murdered Christmas Eve while trying to bring presents home to his three young children. We decided that these kind of things cannot take place in our neighborhood. Activists and concerned neighbors are taking back their streets one block at a time. Put a few houses on that street. Okay. And then go around and hit the few houses on that street. And then we go down to Little Noise and uh, Grand River. <laughs> I mean, if you bold enough to kill somebody on Christmas Eve, then you bold enough to do anything. Christmas Eve and on top of that, the man was coming from church and even if you didn't know that, which I think they didn't know because they just wanted to get the rims, the man was dressed in church clothes and even if you don't care, it's Christmas Eve. Just think about it. Wouldn't you just have some sympathy? Like the man has children to feed and a family to look after. Would you like to respond? Remand is appropriate for murder in the first degree, Your Honor. Uh, I don't think I need to say more. Yeah. Remand is more than appropriate. The court is aware that as Mr. Cox sits here today, he is by law presumed innocent. However, in consideration of bond, there are a number, a number of things that the court has to take into consideration. The likelihood of conviction, the callous and and heinous nature of the allegation that's set before it. And this was just horrible. You know, it's just horrible. It's, it's just absolutely horrible that a man would be sitting at a store waiting to go celebrate Christmas with his kids. And because he had the nerve to purchase some rims that he thought would make his vehicle look nice, that he was targeted for a crime. It's horrible, horrible. And then for him to dare to try to fight back and to be shot in the chest and then according to the video that i saw your client is the one who without provocation just ran up to the car and shot through the window killing the victim it's absolutely horrible and remand in this instance on these facts is way more than appropriate my remand thank you judge thank you. and she's not wrong like this is really horrible like really, really horrible. And on Christmas Eve though, you gotta have some sense of decency. But here we are, a man is dead over rims. A man is dead because two people decided that rims were more important than a life, than a human life. But I might be rambling too much. Who was Anthony Tolson? You already know he was a bass player, but where was he born? Born in Detroit, Michigan as Anthony Lamont Tolson, he began his musical journey at the age of 8, learning to play the piano. Anthony played the piano for a while but felt he needed to explore more instruments. <laughs> Once he arrived in high school, he began to play the bass guitar, and that is where he found his musical love. Even after he found his musical love, he still didn't know which exact instrument to play because at the time of playing the guitar, he was also playing the steel drum. And on top of that, he was also playing the trombone and the drums. He was basically doing everything. The man was talented. He just happened to choose the bass guitar and he stuck with it. quickly emerged as one of the most sought after bassists in his era. He toured around the world basically doing what he loved doing. He was just starting. Two suspects come running around. They divide and one goes around the front and eventually shoots at Mr. Tulsa, who's still in the driver's seat. Now imagine being 33, living your dream, traveling around the world, doing what you do best and out of nowhere, two random people just comes and kill you. For a car, 
not even a car, for the rims on your car. His SUV was found days later, torched with the presence inside. Of the two individuals that killed Anthony Tolson, one of sentenced to life in prison, without the possibility of parole, after he was convicted of first-degree murder and other charges. Cox was convicted on all those charges here last month. Today, the judge gave him the same consideration he gave Anthony Tolson the night he shot him, Christmas Eve. None. After all that, you would think Charles Cox would then apologize to the family of Anthony Tolson and to the whole city of Detroit, but he didn't. He doubled down and said he didn't do it. This courtroom had me guilty before we even started. Before we even started, I was considered guilty. I'm sorry for their loss, but I'm not the man that did it. Nah, if this man actually did it, then he's really cold. Like, this man is cold, really cold. To stand in front of the family and tell them you didn't do it after you know you did it, if he really allegedly did it, then that man is really cold. But I'm not about to fixate on that. The second person involved in the case was sentenced a few months after that. Or that same day, I, I don't really know. He was sentenced to 33 to 60 years in prison. And according to the police, he's the one that told an officer, a truck with some wheels? I could sell that for 1200 But he's not the one that I'm worried about. I'm worried about the third guy. So you don't even know there was a third guy. And who is the third guy? The guy that basically drove the car. I'm thinking he was a little bit remorseful when he got sentenced. I know Ms. Tolson said to show him, say sorry, but... At the end of the day, I am sorry. I never knew that, you know, he was going to lose his life that night. At least he was more respectful than the first person was. But he wasn't done. He continued with this. He was somebody that made it out of Detroit, you know, one of our own who made it out of the city who did something. And, you know, we did take that away from her. So that's the end of the case, basically. An innocent man killed because he had the audacity to buy nicer rims for his car. And on top of that, there's something that the judge said that really caught my heart. Something that he said that I thought had to be said. In this day and age when we're talking about Black Lives Matter, and it seems like it matters except to people in this courtroom. What's more important is rims, gym shoes, cell phones, glasses, things that people are stealing and killing. We scream Black Lives Matter. Yet, we kill our own people in our own neighborhoods. And I'm not saying we're not supposed to scream it. I'm just saying we're supposed to lead by example. Well, that's the end of the case. But let's talk about witness protection at this point. Case for Miss Cox. Case for. Miss Cox, please come You see how they did everything in their power to hide the face of the witness. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this will know why they would do that. But in case you don't know, they hiding the face of the witness because this is a gun related case. A gun related case might mean it might be gang related. But I've always wondered what the point of that was. Because I mean, you hiding the face of the witness in the court but the defendant has already seen the face of the witness so what if the defendant then tells his lawyer and then his lawyer tells the gang to do something to the witness that's a possibility i'm not saying that's gonna happen but that's a big possibility so i'm like what do they really do about situations like this so since i was curious i looked it up and i found that it is normally not possible to give evidence anonymously when you are examined in court. In special occasions though, the court may decide to withhold your name and address from the defendant. Like if you think the defendant should not be given your information, you must contact the court or the person who summoned you for the court hearing. In some situations, the court may also decide that the defendant cannot be present in the courtroom while you give the evidence. In that case, the defendant will either sit in another room where he or she can hear your testimony or your statement will be read aloud to the defendant when you are finished testifying. Thanks for Ms. Cox. Thanks for.
So my question is, in this case, the defendants have already seen the witness, but for some reason, they're still trying to hide the witness face from the camera. What's the point of that? Because the defendant could still say who the witness is. But if you know anything about this, please put it in the comments. If you're a lawyer or something that knows the law and you find this video somehow, some way, please comment down there what you think about this. I mean, I don't know. I'm supposed to do the research, but you know, I couldn't find it. I just kept finding UK law, but I need US law. So help me out. But anyways, thank you for watching. This is Opinion Deviante, a channel where we give our opinions on court cases. I'ma see you later. Peace.